All right, Stephen Shaw here with Misfit Ministry. I did a drum tutorial, if you want to call it that. Hopefully help worship drummers. You know, something I can send to somebody if I'm trying to get my point across as far as like battling drums in a corporate worship setting because the main thing that should be happening in a corporate worship setting is pointing to God, to glorify God, to sing the truths of the gospel. <clears throat> And too often I see, I see too much focus on other things and I want to get back to Christ. So today I want to talk about the songs we choose just in general. I don't care what genre, I don't care what style. I care that it is not distracting, that we are singing various attributes of God and that it is to help the truths of Christ dwell richly within the hearer. And so... I wrote a blog about it. You can check it out at misfitministry.com. Go to the uh, blog page, but I'm gonna just read it because I'm more eloquent on writing than speaking. <laughs> I have been passionate about the songs we sing to God in corporate worship for a very long time, over 10 years now. I have dedicated the last 10 years growing knowledge and discernment in this area. For the last three years, I have been learning much about submission and humility as I have been playing many songs that I would otherwise preach against. God has grown me a lot in this time. So this is coming from a place of love, humility, and passion for Christ. See, I, I had a pride issue a few years back. I mean, I'll still do, of course, but um, <clears throat> a lot worse when it came to my role as a worship leader and, and the songs I play at church and stuff. And we got a new youth pastor, and his heart was to play songs that the kids knew. And, and so I really had to struggle and practice humility to say, okay, I got to learn some of these songs that I otherwise wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. And it's not even necessarily the, like any of, any of the songs that were, that were, you know, just straight up heresy, which there are some out there. My, the, my leader wouldn't like either. And so, but it's just that general problem, which we're going to talk about here, which is why, you know, whether the lack of depth or, you know, things like that, but it's been a really good experience for me, just, you know, humility and submission. You know, it's not something I had to practice a lot before. And so it, it helped me grow. And so I say that because some of these songs, which I think pretty much all the songs I'm going to mention, only a few of them, um, I have played just to show that, hey, I'm a team player and I'm, I'm here to practice, you know, my submission like Christ tells us to. And so I have to preface too, I, I don't, right now, I don't have a main gig leading for a Sunday morning corporate worship um, time. And so things I'm going to be saying are specifically for that. I think the gathered church on a Sunday morning, congregational singing is very specific and we need to be very careful. I mainly youth, lead for youth right now and I think there's a lot of wiggle room there. We obviously don't want to be singing, you know, blasphemous apostasy, but we, we can, we have more lax with that. Um, not the hip hypocrisy, just the songs that we sing. We can play ones that are just a little more, you know, maybe they're just fun and they're singing about God or how much we love him and all that stuff as opposed to the strict rules I believe should be in a Sunday morning adult congregational worship. So I have been preaching and teaching the ways in which a proper congregational worship service should look and sound. Why is this a big deal? Why can't we just gather together and sing songs about God? Because the Bible leaves no room for vague worship in any aspect. Worship is everything we do, our entire lives, from eating, working, sleeping, praying, singing, um, and everything in between. We worship God with our whole life. You know this, at least you should. But because music is a form of art, I think we give the artist too much room for expression in this area. We can't approach musical worship like every other form of music. It's not performing. We are leading God's people <clears throat> into singing his truth as one voice to the one who deserves all the attention and praise. Nor can we approach a Sunday morning flippantly. There are rules for the gathered church every week to engage in God-honoring congregational worship and to sing songs that help the hearer have the gospel truths dwell richly in them and to raise their affections to God. I don't think any of us would disagree with this point, right? I'm simply giving this as a foundational root to what I'm about to say. <laughs> These are some of the issues I have with most of the songs on any given Sunday worship service all across America and unfortunately now it's starting to get all over the world. Most of the songs don't mention God enough or place him at the center of the song. Songs like The Blessing, which really isn't a worship song at all. It is about the person singing it. 
And it comes straight from scripture, yeah. But not every passage from scripture should be a subject of a worship song that we sing together on a Sunday morning. Uh, let me say this, preface this before I continue. There's a lot of songs, I might actually mention this later too, so forgive me for repeating myself, but there's a lot of great songs that Christians should and could listen to in their song preparing for worship. But it doesn't mean it's right for a Sunday morning service. All scripture is great for preaching and teaching, but not always for the subject of a worship song because when you're teaching and preaching, you're able to give the full context of what the passage means. It's a lot harder to do that in, in a song. A song that we sing and worship should be about God, the greatness of God, and the various attributes of God, and shouldn't be followed up, and I can do these things as well. Same with the song, uh, No Longer Slaves and Waymaker. You're singing about yourself, the youth. They aren't the worst songs out there, but when every song is mostly talking about the things God can do for you, there is a problem. A song like Holy Spirit, which is somehow putting you in the position to tell the Holy Spirit where to go and when to go. Or raise a hallelujah. It's, it's general mention of God's help, but it is not enough to help because your power is in your melody. That song, that part really bugs me because <clears throat> that song would be probably 80% better if just that line was changed to your power is your, the word in me. Like, it rhymes, it fits. It's way more solid truth. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation though. It is all part of a problem that I have with a lot of popular uh, music, worship music, that is talking about us rather than God. And when God is mentioned, it is about what he can do for us or how we want more of him without giving any mention of the process of sanctification. Is all popular modern worship bad? No. But when we break down some of these songs, they are either incredibly shallow or they are not God focused. And just because God is mentioned does not mean the song is about him. Sometimes Jesus is simply assumed. God should never be an unspoken assumption. We don't sing to God simply for what he can do for us. I said that a lot now, but this is a big deal. We lift up his glory and sing to, uh, to help our affections be brought to him because of who he is. Our song should also help the unbeliever know how good God is and what he's done for his children, but they also need to know that he's the only one able to do these things. Yes, preaching and teaching can, can and should be talking about all these things, but the music is what people are going to remember all week. If our church's theology was made up of songs we sing, what would your church know about God? It's a very important question. If in 20 years your church's theology was simply built around the songs you sing, what would your church believe about God? And God simply being good or God is love is not enough information. And if the other songs that we are singing aren't lacking in these areas, then it's usually lacking in depth. Or we're just singing the same thing over and over and over again so that make the hearer feel something, right? This emotionally drawn music forcing some kind of feeling out of us. Part of the problem, I believe, is when worship, singer, when worship leaders plan their songs, one, they're not thinking of it in terms of a wide range of attributes about God, the depths of our sin and needing of a savior, a big process that if anyone wants to see the breakdown of a solid Sunday morning, please, you can, you can contact me and I'll send that over to you. The worship leader's job, the church's job isn't to prepare your heart for worship. And I know that might sound weird, but Sunday morning gathering, and this is, this is really the main problem is we have a lot of baby immature, um, kiddie pool Christians that are still looking for that experience. They're looking for that rock and roll concert, good feelings vibe, right? But that's not our job. We need to teach them how to worship. We're, when we gather together, it's supposed to be a continued time of worship that we've been having by ourselves with our family all week long. Continued worship. We don't come to church to worship. We come to church to continue worshiping as the church. And we don't even come to a church, we gather as the church. So songs that prepare you for worship, which are the ones that you've been doing all week, and then the songs that you worship God to are the ones drawn on a Sunday morning service. And so I hope that helps. There's a lot of aspects that I want to hit in this realm, like what churches we're singing from, churches like Bethel Elevation and Hillsong, are bogus churches, and unfortunately, Everybody's singing all of their songs. It's the, it's the majority, if not every single song that most churches sing. And they're not, they're, their churches are bogus and we're supporting them by playing their music. And so 
That's a whole other video though. I hope this helped on at least think, think through, start asking why more. That might probably, probably be another topic because you know why why do we even need to have drums why do we need to have lights why are we having this fog machine you know we need to we need to ask why more when we gather together if our mission statement is to draw people closer to god simply the, the music part of it um, through words and help people's affections be turned towards christ and explore attributes of god then why do we need a strobe light you know and so not all bad thanks but we need, just need to be more intentional. Something I'm still growing in every day. I love you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.